RC joystick time. Sorry for the delay. All right, here is the system as a whole. So there is the, for now, the Blade Theory FPV wing with some FPV goggles and our transmitter and of course our RC joystick. So the transmitter is bound to the wing. The transmitter controls it. Um, when you set up the trainer port option in your radio, you would assign a switch. So if I flip this switch on my radio, I can now control it with the joystick. And needless to say, if you're flying something like a wing and you have FPV goggles, that having an actual flight stick to control it is, feel, it just feels more natural than this. So, um, anyway, there's really nothing going on with the actual aircraft itself, right? It, it doesn't require any modifications. So I'm just going to uh, unplug that and move it off to the side. Now the transmitter, we don't really need these either. The transmitter is gonna be any transmitter with a trainer port. So trainer ports have been around forever. Some transmitters aren't going to have it. Some are. Some are only going to support four channel. Um, some are going to support more than four channel. Pretty much every other radio system in the world is going to have some type of trainer port and hopefully enough channels for you to do this. So just keep that in mind. Having said that, there's nothing special going on here in the transmitter all you have to do is know how to set up your input so on the tyrannus um let's see here i suck with this thing so on the tyrannus my model set up right now is theory and if i go to the end of that uh, my trainer port mode is in master jack and what that does that means that it's listening for a signal so you want to make sure it's listening for a signal and not on the other options. Because there's really nothing special going on in the radio other than that setup. So we're just going to turn the radio off and we're just going to ignore that for now. The joystick itself is a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro and I think I paid around $35 for it on Amazon. So, you know, 35 bucks, pretty good candidate. It's got a much smaller throttle than the joysticks with the dual, you know, the big throttle quadrant. So if you saw the video with the airplane that Gavin was flying, um, he was flying a much larger joystick, uh, Thrustmaster Extreme. So this is the Logitech, and I really like it because it's small. Um, this is what came out of it. It was basically a a USB human interface controller um, and then these plates. These plates were designed to weigh it down. Um, unfortunately they take up too much space that we need for electronics so those came out. Um, the USB controller also provides power for the joystick so when we remove this of course we remove our power source and you can see I have this really big battery here. This is a two cell, 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, you don't need a battery that big. All you need is a battery big enough to power your microcontroller. In this case, I can go with a much smaller battery than that. Um, there's also the PPM cable which is just a regular stereo headphone wire. So that should be easy enough to find. Um, and then this is the programming wire for my microcontroller. Um, if you're going to bolt everything up inside of there, uh, you might want to at least have some way to reprogram it without taking it apart because there's going to be stuff that you'll want to change after you fly, after you do a couple test flights. You might realize something's not quite what it should be. So. The way that you take apart the Thrustmaster joystick is by removing all of the screws from the side of the 
flight stick. So I just have for you know I just have one in there for now. So I'm just gonna pop that one screw out, and then there's a little clip on the bottom underneath. So you just press that little clip, and the whole thing will come apart. Um, just if you do use this joystick, a word of advice is to keep the trigger inside. Keep the trigger on the left side. Otherwise it's going to keep falling out and put a piece of tape over the side button. The tape does not interfere with the button at all and it just prevents this from falling out when you're taking it apart and putting it together which you might do pretty often. And then uh, there goes our screw. So then this side comes off and there's a little uh, printed circuit board without buttons and a little micro switch for the trigger and then we have a potentiometer for the yaw axis okay um, that's pretty much it for the top part so you have to take all those screws out I only took one out there's a lot more than one now on the bottom there's a bunch of screws around the bottom and those need to come out So again, I only have a couple screws in there because I don't uh, feel like unscrewing a bunch of screws right now. Holds up pretty well just for having a couple screws in it while you're, while you're building, you know. So once those bottom screws are off, then this top plate will come right off. And here is the inside of our joystick. So, on mine you can see an analog to digital converter, which I soldered together on perf board. And then we have our microcontroller over here. And I, I used some connectors. Um, you can solder everything. This is all very temporary. Like, you know, I don't plan on leaving this microcontroller in this joystick unless I'm using it. So, it certainly have some other purposes. And it's a good use of the space, um, so you're definitely not going to fit, you know, an Arduino board in here. It's just, it's not going to happen. So, you know, there are other options that do fit that you can put in here. Um, this is what I happen to have. Uh, what microcontroller you use is up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Basically what this joystick is is a human interface device right so we as the human being manipulate it you know we can move it left right up or down or we can press these buttons so what we have to do is we just have to get a microcontroller to be able to read those inputs and output a ppm signal so the really cool thing about that is is you don't even really need a joystick to do it you could just do it using um, parts and a breadboard and a microcontroller. So the type of parts that we're talking about here are uh, push buttons, right? So a push button only has two states. It's either open or closed. You can call it on or off. Or in binary, you can call it a zero or a one. The push button itself is a super simple device. It's just all it does is short out a couple wires. So when you press on a push button, two wires short out. Now that's great for the buttons, but in the case of say your pitch axis, you wouldn't want to have an on or off switch. You know, you wouldn't want to be fully pitched forward or fully pitched back. That wouldn't work out. So you need what's called proportional control. So proportional control actually gives you a range of values. Instead of just two values, you have a range of values. In the first video, we discussed that with the absence of the USB controller inside of the joystick, there's nothing left but buttons and knobs. So in this video, we're going to discuss the... Uh, knobs which are also known as potentiometers and the buttons 
and how you interface them with your microcontroller. So as you can see, um, there's three wires that come out of each knob. Um, in this case, there's actually five because the power wires are doubled up. So you see this one just has positive, negative, and then the signal is the middle one. So what we do is we connect the positive and negative of all of them together, which you'll see right here. That's all the positives and negatives soldered together. And then I just have, you know, two wires for positive and negative. So that's going to power all four of the potentiometers. And then you have those four signal wires all coming together into this one connector. And you don't have to use connectors. If, you know, you can solder everything if you want. I did not hook up any of the buttons right now. Um, it's really easy. I did it on Gavin's joystick, but um, to hook up a button, you just have to find what wire goes to your button. So we can go over that in a little bit. But for now, let's just talk about how this how this connects to the microcontroller. So we have our four signal wires here for the potentiometers and I took out the electronics so here is the analog to digital converter that I built and then here is the microcontroller and then it's zip tied for some strain relief you know so you can't yank the cords out so it's really just a power wire which powers the microcontroller and then the programming wire which you could just ignore for now and then the analog to digital converter has four signal wires that go to it so you see this group of four wires come over here and then it also has power so the analog to digital converter needs a reference voltage to figure out what the signal is so we have a positive and a negative over here. All right, and everything here is 3.3 volts. So when the power comes into the microcontroller, it steps it down to 5 volts, and then it steps it down again to 3.3 volts. So we're feeding our potentiometers with 3.3 volts of power, and then we get our signal wire from here. So it would be really easy to uh, just take a multimeter. Okay, and we're going to take a 3.3 volt power source. So now we have 3.3 volts going into all of the potentiometers. So we're just going to ground our multimeter to the ground of one of the potentiometers. And then we can plug into one. So I'm not really sure which one we're plugging into. I think this one's the yaw. Okay, so if you look on the multimeter now, you'll see that it's outputting a voltage. And if I turn that potentiometer, it's going to change that voltage. So the analog to digital converter is looking for a voltage. And what it does is it converts that voltage um, to well to binary but it it makes it so that you can work with it in your code so we're using a 10-bit analog to digital converter which gives us 1024 steps or 1024 resolution so the analog to digital converter will take this movement and convert it to one of 1024 values based on how far it's moved but that's not necessarily true because in order to get that full value, you would have to sweep the voltage all the way from the highest voltage to the lowest voltage. So that's actually quite a bit of turning. If I was to attach a lever to this potentiometer and turn it, you would see that it goes way past where the joystick would go past. So the joystick isn't actually moving the full swing of the potentiometer. It's really only moving, you know, maybe a quarter of it. So when you look at your 10-bit analog to digital converter and your 1024 resolution, 
you might as well cut that in in quarters you know it's it's going to be closer to maybe 250 steps than 1024 and the way that you can get around that is by using a 12-bit analog to digital converter um, so I'm using 10-bit and it works fine flying around it, it seems to work great um, if you want a little bit more precision then you're gonna want to go with a 12-bit analog to digital converter so the, the next part is uh, reading a push button and push buttons are really really simple devices as we discussed the Tyrannus is in trainer mode and it's showing the outputs of the microcontroller on this screen so I have six channels mapped there um, since it's for a flying wing there's no rudder so you've got throttle elevon and uh, the flight mode switch and then I have an extra one and actually the elevons use two channels because it's two uh, servos mixed together so that's how we end up with six channels so the sixth channel in the code is assigned to this pin 16 and actually when I touch the pin you can see the value change so the way that we hook up a push button <clears throat> to the circuit this might be easier if I just draw it okay so the way it works is like this so we have in the code we have our pin 16 on our microcontroller set up as a push button input which means that we're reading its state so its state should either be high or low which in this case should be 0 or 3.3 .3 volts okay and then once we do that in our code pretend this wire is a push button so if I ground this wire you'll see that stays the same now if I put it on the 3.3 .3 volt lead you'll see it goes up so if I do that a couple times see how it doesn't quite go down right away that's not good that means the pin this pin right here this IO pin is floating and we don't want it to float so this is how we read a button we have our microcontroller and we're using pin 16 so the first thing that you would normally do and I know that I didn't just do it right here but you would do it on all all of your inputs is have a hundred ohm resistor on the pin all right and then you have your push button here's the push button so the push button is normally open and on the other side of the push button you have 3.3 .3 volts so when you press this button the 3.3 .3 volts goes into the microcontroller and the microcontroller says hey the button's pressed when you don't press this button this is what I was talking about with the floating input so to stop that we stick another resistor here to ground and we'll make that 10k so when you close this when you close the contacts of this button the power is going to go through it and it's not going to go through the 10k resistor to ground it's going to take the pass of least resistance go through the 100 ohm resistor hit pin 16 and then the microcontroller is going to say okay that button's being pressed with the potentiometer things are a little bit different um, because we're going to read it with an analog to digital converter um, and, the, and the reason for that of course is because we uh, have our uh, proportional value where it's not just on or off so we need all those values in between um, so you know we really don't again we really don't need a joystick to do this um, what we can do is steal power from our ADC Okay, so what I did was 
connected power to this potentiometer just like we did in the big joystick. And now I'm going to connect to the first channel of my ADC. This is an eight channel ADC. I only have it set up for four because I didn't want to put all those resistors and capacitors in there. All right, so now this potentiometer is hooked up to the analog to digital channel. And you'll see, it's, I hooked it up to channel one, so you'll see channel one go all the way up. If I swap the polarity of the potentiometer, it'll do the opposite. All right, so you don't necessarily have to hook up the power to the potentiometers in any particular order. You just have to understand that um, it's going to produce the inverse signal if it's swapped. So you can change that in your code. Now we can go into the code right now and we could say, you know, instead of doing this, go the opposite direction. It's not a big deal. So this is how you can see, this is how the potentiometer connects to the analog to digital converter. And then the analog to digital converter has four wires that go over to the microcontroller. That's called the SPI bus, that's SPI. And that communicates all of the values that it's receiving with the microcontroller. So now all the microcontroller has to do is take those values and convert them to PPM. The scope is showing the PPM signal that the microcontroller is generating right now. The scope is connected to the pin that's connected to the stereo audio cable that's plugged into the trainer port. So you can see it actually looks like there is uh, six signals there when in fact there's five. And the reason for that is the signal, there's a frame. So this is the entire frame from the, from the outside, from the outer edge to the outer edge. And these gaps in between signify the channel. So if we turn our potentiometer that's connected to the ADC, you'll see that move. So that is the PPM signal, and that's how it is able to transmit all of the channels because it uses, it multiplexes all of the channels together. So there's just, you know, two wires between the two. All right, we're just gonna go through the code real quick here um, starting with our constants uh, we set up our clock frequency for our microcontroller and then if you go down from there you'll see ADC info um, these are our analog to digital converter pins so that'll just show you know which pins go where um, when you set it up and then also I have a constant defined for button one, uh, which is pin 16. It just makes the code easier to write. So then moving down to object, uh, this is, well, this programming language is spin. That's what works with the parallax propeller. And it's object oriented, just like with, uh, with Arduino, you know, you have libraries and it, uh, it makes coding a lot easier, um, especially if you're not a programmer, if you go out and find a library that does what you need it to do. So in this case, I found a library for the PPM part and I didn't have to write anything. And then moving down to our variables, uh, we have longs for the ADC. We also have longs for the value of the RC. And we have a byte for button one. And then the main part of the program is right here. It's actually all very simple. Uh, what you're looking at is first setting up the ADC and all that does is it's setting pins to inputs and it's setting a couple pins to an output. And uh, it's all, you know, that's all part of the ADC code. So again, like I didn't even write that. Um, and then we have the PPM start line, which is, uh, you know, pin eight on the microcontroller. Zero is, I think, whether or not the signal is inverted. 
Um, so for the Tyrannus, uh, that was a zero to invert the signal. And then the next number is four channel. Actually, I have it set to five. So it says eight comma zero comma five. That means five channel. And then 300 would be 0.3 milliseconds. And then the 22.5 milliseconds is the frame size. So then we have a little pause and then we just have a repeat loop and the repeat loop samples the analog to digital converter. And then it uses the value straight from the analog to digital converter, which is zero to 1023. And then we add in most cases 1165 to it because the RC stuff wants a value of 1000 to 2000. So the ADC doesn't give you a value of 1000 to 2000. It gives you zero to 1023. So if you add, in this case, 1165 to it, then you'll have your 1000 to 2000. And on the next line down, that uses our PPM object to change the RC channel to whatever that value is. Um, and then you'll notice I have the one button set up in the code uh, I guess that was from the other joystick um, and that is an if statement if else statement and that's just checking to see if that button one which is pin 16 is one if it is one that means that the 3.3 volts is hitting it so in that case it's gonna set the ppm value of that channel which is channel 4 um, in the code and it's actually channel 6 on the transmitter just because of how it's mapped it will set that to a high or low value